Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem word pattern. We're given a pattern and a string S and we want to know if S follows the same pattern. What do they mean by follows the same pattern? Well, let's take a look at an example. A pattern in this case is just going to be a series of characters where each character should map to a word in the string S. and a word in the string S is defined by basically uh, these spaces, right? These spaces separate each word. So dog is a separate word, which is uh, followed by a space, and then cat is another word, and then another cat, and then dog. And this part is a little bit confusing because they don't explicitly state it, but I guess that's what they imply by bijection. But basically each character, so in this case A, has to map to a single word, right? Only a single word. And every word in the string S has to map to a single character. So it has to go both ways. There has to be a single mapping for each character and each word. So in this case, A is the first character and dog is the first word. So that must mean A has to map to uh, the word dog. Okay, and then we get to another character, B. That must mean B has to map to the character or the word cat. And it also goes both ways, right? Dog has to uh, map to the character A cat has to map to the character B now. Now we get to our second B. So since we've already seen a B before, that must mean that this next word has to be cat, and it is cat. Also, since we've already seen the word cat before, it must mean that cat, or it must mean the character here has to be B, and it is a B, so uh, everything is good. We don't really add anything here. And then we see our last character, which is a lowercase a, and then we see the word dog. That's also consistent. A maps to dog, dog maps to a. So you can see that this is mostly straightforward, but it's really about the edge cases here. First thing we want to talk about, though, is the data structure we're going to be using here. Well, we're mapping characters to words and words to characters. It makes sense to probably use a hash map in this case. That's really what it's designed for, and it's the most efficient data structure we could use in this case because each mapping like this is going to be an O of one operation. Okay, but one of the edge cases here is, well, in both of these examples, we have the same number of words as we have characters in the pattern. But is that always gonna be the case? Well, nowhere in the problem description do they say that. They do say below in the problem description that uh, there are, you know, each word is defined as being separated by spaces, but they don't say how many words we're going to have and how many characters we're going to have in the pattern. So if possibly we have more words here than we have characters here, or maybe we have more characters here than we have words here, uh, then that's not going to work. So in that case, we would return false because then the patterns don't match each other. Now, how are we gonna do that? Well, just to get the list of words, we could literally just call a built-in function called split and split this string based on the space character, which would give us a list of the four words that are contained here. Now, maybe your interviewer doesn't want you to use the built-in one, well, that's okay because it's not super difficult to write our own split function, but that would be something to talk about with your interviewer, right? Basically, what we would do in that case is just keep reading characters until we reached a space and then say, okay, this is one word. And then we'd start again at the beginning here. Keep reading characters until we see a space and then say, okay, this is one word. And then, you know, put those words inside of a list of some kind. Okay, let's take another example just to illustrate why we need to have our mapping go both ways, right? From a character to a word and from a word to a character. That's why we're going to be needing two hash maps. And I just want to show you exactly why. Let's take an example like this one. Suppose we were only mapping from a character to the word. Then we would say, okay, A maps to cat. That's perfectly fine. A maps to to cat. Then we'd say, okay, B also maps to cat, even though that's not allowed. Remember, a word has to map to a single uh, character, but in that case, clearly that's not true. How can two characters map to the same word? That shouldn't be possible, but in this case it is. And then we'd say, okay, this last A also maps to cat. Well, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but remember, this doesn't work. We can't have that. So what we would do in this case also, when we get to this B character, uh, well, first, when we get to this A character, we'd say, okay, A maps to cat, cat maps to A. Then we'd say, okay, B maps to cat. Well, that's fine because B doesn't already map to a different character. But then we'd say, okay, cat 
maps to be? Well, take a look in our hash map. We'd say that, well, before we even do this, cat already maps to a different character. So therefore, we can't have it be reassigned to a different character. So in this case, we would immediately return false. This doesn't work. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. And by the way, what is going to be the time complexity of this solution? Well, we're going to have to go through every character in the pattern and pretty much every character in the overall string that contains all of our words. So you can say that the time complexity is going to be something like big O n plus m, you know, just based on the total number of characters we have in each of these strings. The memory complexity is going to be roughly the same because remember we have two hash maps, one for each of these strings. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. Okay, so now let's write the code. The first thing we want to do is actually get our list of words. Uh, so we're just going to use the built-in function for the string s and just split it based on the uh, space character. And then we're going to initialize our two hash maps. Actually, before we even do that, we should probably check if this is going to even be a valid solution. Basically, the number of characters that are in pattern should be equal to the number of words uh, that we have. But if they're not equal, then we don't even have to do anything because we can immediately return false. This solution won't be possible. But if that's not the case, then we can initialize our hash maps. So we're going to map each character to a word and each word to a character. So here are our two hash maps. And then we're going to uh, want to iterate through both of the characters in pattern and each word uh, in our list of words at the same exact time. We know that the length of both of those is going to be the exact same, so it should be easy to do. We could do that with like an index, but in Python, it's pretty convenient to use a built-in function. So I'm going to um, iterate through each character and each word in our two data structures. And in Python, you can zip them. Basically, that allows you to iterate through both of them at the same time. So we're going to zip the characters in pattern and the words in the list. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Well, first we want to check if we have to return false, basically if the pattern somehow doesn't match. So basically we want to know if this character that we're looking at already maps to a different word. So basically that would mean that C is already in our character to word hash map, right? And the word that it maps to, which we can get by uh, using it as the key is uh, not equal to this word that we're currently looking at. It should be mapped to this word, but if it's not mapped to this word, then we have to return false. And we're going to actually do the exact same check with the word uh, with the opposite data structure. So basically, if this word has already a, a, a character mapped to it, um, we would check it like this word to character. And if uh, that word or if that character that this word is mapped to is not equal to the character that we're currently looking at right now, then we would also return false because that means it was already mapped to a different character. But if neither of these is true, that means we're perfectly fine. And we can basically add these to our hash map. Either we haven't seen this word or this character before, or we have seen them before and they already map to that same character or word. So basically what we can do is just like this, uh, either this operation will be setting this, mapping this character to this word for the first time, or it will be mapping the same word that's already in this hash map. So it'll, it basically works out in both cases and also do it with the word. So the word, this word is going to be mapped to this character. And then we're going to continue with the entire loop. And if the entire loop exits and we didn't find any mismatches between any characters or words, then we know that the patterns match. So we can go ahead and return true. Now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.